This is Jennifer Nyem once again. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for staying with us until the last session of MNH special webinar series. Our last speaker for the day is Dr. Marian De Leon, our very own university researcher and curator for the Microbial Culture Collections. And to introduce our speaker, may we call on the moderator for this session, Dr. Noel Sabino, Associate Professor at Institute of Biological Sciences and MNH Curator for Bacteria, Yeasts, and Molds. Thank you, Jen. Okay. A pleasant afternoon to all of us. Now, before I introduce our special guest speaker, I would like to remind you of the house rules. Please, uh, first, make sure that your audio is on mute and your video turned off. And please, the Zoom chat box is only to be used for sending questions. So let us observe proper webinar etiquette, okay? Uh, it has always been a pleasure to introduce a colleague of mine, okay, who loves the microbial world, okay, Dr. Marian De Leon. Uh, Dr. Marian P. De Leon is a university researcher too, and curator of the Microbial Culture Collection of the UPLB Museum of Natural History. She pioneered researches on exploration of Philippine caves for novel and potential microorganisms, as well as the antibiogram profile of pathogenic strains. Now, Dr. De Leon is a graduate of the University of the Philippines Los Baños with BS in Food Technology, major in Microbiology, and MS in food science, major in biochemistry. She then earned her PhD in engineering, major in material and life sciences from Osaka University. Her contributions in microbiology has been recognized by the Philippine Academy for Microbiology Incorporated and certified her as a registered microbiologist. She has been given a special citation from the National Academy of Science and Technology Talent Search for Young Scientists in 2018 for her works on protein engineering of TK subtilisin from hyperthermophilic archaeon. Now, in 2018, uh, Dr. De Leon received an appointment as a visiting associate professor at Osaka University. And in 2019, she was conferred as certified biosafety officer given by the National Training Center for Biosafety and Biosecurity and the U.S. Department of State Biosecurity Engagement Program. Okay. To give her talk titled UPLB MNH Biosafety at the Forefront, Experience in the COVID-19 Pathogenic, let us all welcome Dr. Marian P. De Leon. Dr. Sabino, for that uh, very generous introduction, uh, it is always, uh, it is truly an honor to be sharing the screen with, um, with distinguished speakers. So we have four professors and curators of the museum who, who had uh, excellent presentation before me. It's really a challenge to be at par with their presentation. But I will not be uh, highlight, highlighting any zoonotic disease or uh, nor... Um, um, uh, I, uh, what I'll be presenting or I'll be putting on spotlight is um, the UPLB Museum of Natural History, which is celebrating its uh, 44th uh, anniversary uh, tomorrow. But we just started our celebration just yesterday. So for, for those who have... Uh, can you see my next slide? Uh, it seems I'm having a technical problem. Can you see my slide now? Okay, that's there. So uh, for, for the sake of those who have not heard or have not visited the UPLB Museum of Natural History, we were established uh, September 30, 1970, uh, 1976, during the uh, 877th meeting of the Board of Regents. And if I may say, uh, we are the lead institution in the natural, uh, natural history research in UPLB. And I think we have contributed uh, much in the um, advancement of natural history, uh, biodiversity, ecology, uh, taxonomy uh, in, in the Philippines, research in the Philippines. So in 
uh, the excerpt uh, of the BOR resolution, the UPLB Museum of Natural History serves as center of documentation. It is actually a repository of biological specimens used for scientific reference. We also serve as a research center. Uh, we have done several researches on biodiversity and uh, natural history. We also are serve. Uh, we also serve as center of information and a training ground for future naturalists and center of education, wherein uh, we uh, showcase um, and um, we showcase how uh, natural heritage can be uh, preserved. Okay, uh, there are seven sections in the museum. We have the Botanical Herbarium, okay, um, where we have uh, more than 60,000 of uh, uh, plant specimens, uh, ferns and allies, um, even microalgae and hepatic and mosses. mosses. We also have our uh, entomological museum where we have uh, hundreds of thousands of pinned, uh, pinned and uh, slight mounted insects. We also have our forestry herbarium with more than 10,000 uh, specimens. Uh, our very own microbial culture collection with more than 800 strains of bacteria, fungi, and uh, archaea, but we do not have viruses with us, so do not worry. So we have the mycological herbarium with more than 10,000 ascomycetes, basidiomycetes, and mycetes. Um, we have the Zoological and Wildlife Museum, also known as the Joscoro S. Rabor Wildlife Collection. This house is uh, 16,000 or more than 16,000, including those on display. And we have the Hortorium with 400 living species, um, food, medicinal, tonic, and ornamental plants. Okay. So we also provide services. Uh, we have in our museum uh, our integrated biodiversity exhibits where representative specimens are put on display. We can also bring this to other uh, institutions, universities, and school as part of our mobile and special exhibits. We also provide training programs to our uh, to local government units and other government agencies and NGOs. We also have our biodiversity seminar series, and uh, we also provide technical uh, technical assistance and specialized services. These include uh, scientific name verification. Uh, we also provide. Um, identification services for different biological uh, samples. We also provide microbial cultures and microbiological analysis for food, soil, and other environmental samples. We also receive samples and um, the, uh, we also receive specimens that uh, for deposition in our uh, different collections. And uh, we are fortunate that we gain the trust and confidence of our foreign counterparts, experts in the different taxa. Uh, that's why we have our foreign collaboration, not only from different museums, but also research institutions. And uh, we also have, aside from the many publications of our curators and staff, we also have our online in-house journal which is the Laksambuhay, where you can publish your biodiversity researches. Uh, we have several programs, research programs in the museum, and these include the cave biodiversity and the small islands biodiversity researches. Uh, just recently, um, uh, one of our colleagues and curators in the museum published this um, two new Endemic species found in Romblon Island. I think the first one is um, the as a gecko and a skink, if I if I got it right. And our entomolog uh, in the entomological museum, the rare violin uh, beetle. 
on the part of the microbiology or the microbial culture collection, we are also fortunate that we, we, we were able to isolate the, uh, a strep, uh, several strains of streptomyces with antibiotic, uh, with antibiotic properties. So these are some of the activities, just few of the activities of the museum before the pandemic. And we have already uh, planned uh, several activities that includes field work. So, so then came pandemic or then came COVID-19. So the next few slides will be uh, presenting to you what were the efforts, collective efforts uh, done by the MNH staff in addressing or in response to uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, uh, this caught us all unaware or we are all surprised by this, uh, by this pandemic, though we have, have heard of it uh, sometime December when there was this outbreak in Wuhan, China. And the Department of Health just recent uh, just conf just confirmed the first report or first case of COVID nineteen in the Philippines, uh, late January, and then uh, by March, the Department of Health already announced that the first was done, and then the rest is history. So we have to work from home we have to close the museum because we are afraid to be infected by this unknown. That time still unknown because it's 2019 N or novel coronavirus. But uh, sometime in May or April, they have already uh, identified it as uh, and uh, elucidated its structure uh, as a human coronavirus and member of a large family of coronaviruses that includes, sorry, that includes SARS-CoV, uh, which was reported in uh, 20, um, 2003, I think, and the MERS-CoV sometime 2012 to 2013. And again, as uh, mentioned by the, in the presentation of Sir Philip, aside from the many viruses reported, this SARS-CoV-2 has been found in bats. So this is for, for those who have visited the museum during its peak months, you'll be seeing this scenario. Kids playing, taking down notes, parents taking pictures, uh, tourist guide shouting, it's about time to live. And when COVID-19 came, this is now the museum. Sorry, my picture is not so beautiful, but it's very quiet. It's very peaceful. Um, you can only see few staff reporting because we follow uh, the hybrid uh, workforce as, as recommended uh, by the University of the Philippines, Las Palmas. And the... Uh, International Council of Museums confirmed in the May 18 bulletin that the museum have been that museums have been specially affected by the COVID-19 pandemic with nearly 90% of them or more than 85,000 institutions having closed their doors for varying lengths of time during the crisis and sadly nearly 13% according to their uh, according to their report will no longer be able to reopen even after the pandemic. So, uh, as a museum, we are also affected by, by the, pan the pandemic. During the lockdown, of course, we have to close our doors, temporarily, temporarily close the museum uh, for some uh, for biosafety issues because uh, our museum, for those who have visited us, is not so big, and uh, of course we cannot uh, we cannot control um, the the number of people coming. So we have to really uh, close the museum for a few months. Uh, we are still awaiting for the announcement, but uh, are we really that ready to open the museum and accept visitors? 
So during the lockdown, we have to be thinking over what to <clears throat> what safe biosafety protocols. We need to make some assessment. Um, before the pandemic, we have already biosafety protocols in place, but these are applied or these protocols are being observed in laboratories, specifically the microbial culture collection and perhaps other uh, sections of the museum. Um, during, the, during the lockdown, we need to do some assessment. We need to assess the probability or the chance that an adverse effect will uh, might happen in this case brought by the COVID-19 to, to anyone in the museum. So we need to do some bio-risk assessment, uh, try to evaluate the risk and uh, whether we have some mitigation measures in place, um, whether the risk is acceptable or not, whether the consequences might you know, be acceptable as well or uh, it can be addressed with uh, placing several mitigation measures. So, biosafety is actually a containment principle, collective technologies and practices that can be implemented to prevent unintentional or accidental exposure to pathogens or toxin. And here, we refer, we, in this context or in this pandemic, uh, the bad bag is actually the the virus, which is the SARS-CoV-2. And we have to put uh, several uh, biosafety practices uh, in order to prevent um, the staff, our clients, uh, to, the ex uh, uh, to exposure to, to, this, to, this, to this virus. Okay, having this in mind, we have the mitigation measures as, um, <clears throat> as um, you can, you can, um, download this from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. But the first uh, three controls, the elimination, the, uh, the first two, the elimination and substitution, probably we cannot, uh, this is not applicable because uh, we still do not have the vaccine for the uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, or for COVID-19, sorry, for COVID-19. So uh, for engineering controls, I think we need to, uh, address this as well because um, for those who have visited the museum, I think we need to improve our air conditioning and ventilation system, uh, especially if we are to open, to open the museum to the general public. But I think what we have mostly implemented in the museum are administrative controls and the, PP, the, the wearing of uh, PPE or the personal protective equipment. Okay, for the biosafety practices, we have conducted an in-house uh, webinar slash training last uh, May 25 to emphasize the need for biosafety practices. So it was attended by MNH uh, staff and some curators, some, some curators. Uh, were able to attend the uh, the webinar, so we we discuss what are the possible practices, biosafety practices that we can implement, so we can uh, protect the safety. Of, we can protect our staff because uh, I think sometime June we need to return to office. So despite that it's a hybrid uh, workforce or schedule, there will still be. Uh, staff that will be physically reporting to the Museum of Natural History. So those practices uh, are considered administrative controls. Under administrative controls, of course, uh, the, the temperature checking upon entry to the museum. So it is a requirement that at least three times a day you have to be uh, your temperature have to be checked. So we use portable infrared temperature and even the thermal scanner that I think being used in the field it has been used to do the temperature checking. Um, we also did disinfection. So uh, we, we use different uh, PPE. So this is on a special case. That's why one of our staff or one of our colleagues uh, is wearing a coveralls. Because, but we recognize 
that the coveralls uh, should be worn by our healthcare uh, workers or our frontliners. But in this special case, uh, I think it is allowed because uh, we also have our share of fears being exposed to uh, possible or suspect COVID-19 positive uh, staff of the UPLB, but not of MNH, but of UPLB. So we also have this no entry policy and uh, we put barrier. I think in every uh, offices in the UPLB, we just use a plastic barrier and foot baths to disinfect uh, an individual coming in and coming out of the UPLB museum. We have also released guidelines and protocols. So for those who, who would like to visit the museum or uh, do some research in our collection, we, we do allow. Uh, we do allow, but we, you need to submit uh, several documents. If I may say, if I may use the term used by our director, Flitora of uh, documents, you need to fill up the health declaration as required by the University Health Service. You have to read and take into, into heart and your mind the interim guidelines uh, proposed by the um, IBC or Institutional Biosafety Committee of the UPLB MNH. You have to fill out our online assessment form. Uh, you need to also submit a medical, uh, medical clearance from Barangay of Residence that you have not been in the list of probable suspect or COVID-19 positive. And all this you can find in our uh, website. We have uh, placed there uh, the MNH protocol for uh, visits of our clients. But we have not, um, again, reopened the museum. So this is only for our clients, our collaborators who would like to have a meeting with uh, our director or some members of the MNH staff. So if you would like to access our collections, uh, we also have, uh, if you would like to access our collection in the different sections or submit samples for uh, identification or perhaps request for distribution of culture or uh, deposit microbial culture or even scientific name verification, we have all the protocols in our website and you can just click in and then you can check how to proceed. What are the requirements? What are the documents to be submitted? And this has, of course, to be approved by our di director upon the endorsement of the um, Institutional Biosafety Committee, which is headed by yours truly. Um, one of, aside from maintaining our collection, one of the challenges that we are facing right now is the conduct of our research because I think uh, our uh, presenters, four presenters, um, mentioned of uh, field visits, uh, field sampling. I think all the sections in the museum are also uh, have that component in their uh, in their projects. So, have we canceled all field works? Yes, for the meantime, we have to cancel all, all our field works. Pending approval of uh, the uh, pending the easing up of the quarantine because we cannot still we cannot cross borders we cannot for example if our uh, field site is somewhere in Mindanao and it is a low risk and coming from Laguna we have to subject ourselves to the required fourteen day quarantine before and after going back to Laguna. So before going to the place of uh, where you will do your field sampling and going back to Laguna, you need a total of 28 days quarantine. And you need to also have this um, RT-PCR, which is the gold standard, and it has to be negative before you will be allowed. But I think um, the, as, as recommended by the IBC of the UPLB MNH, we have to cancel our field works and 
we also uh, supposedly you have budget to to support the per dime or per diem of the staff who will be who will undergo 28 days of quarantine uh, that that uh, that does not include yet the actual field work and the cost of the RT PCR. Then you must have included that in your project because it is a requirement, especially if you will cross borders. But if it will be within uh, within uh, Los Banos or Mount Makinig, maybe there, uh, that will be another assessment. That will be another recommendation from the IBC for approval of the director. Um, as mentioned by Dr. Gonzalez, um, we, we have submitted several uh, research proposals during the lockdown. And always, always, the question is, uh, what are your alternative uh, what are your alternative action if this will this uh, pandemic will still continue uh, until the implementation of your proposal? Because I think we cannot stop doing research, but we can mitigate or we can uh, do that by uh, putting uh, by doing proper assessment and by putting biosafety protocols and um, practices in place. So one of our proposal with DOST is the creation of field biosafety standard operating procedure and compiling this into a manual. If I understand it, we have an IACOC in, unit, in UPLB and then we can work together with our IACOC of UPLB because uh, sometimes the IACOC uh, reviews proposal for animal care handling when brought to the to the laboratory. I think it has to be also a policy set by the DNR that uh, sampling or field sampling and transport of wild animals or uh, animals from the wild or can be transported safely to the laboratory and can be handl handled in the laboratory with uh, extreme precautionary measures. Can we stop bad research? I don't think so because uh, as mentioned by uh, Prof. Philip, he is encouraging us to do uh, more of bad research. I'm also doing uh, the microbiome of bat, but we collect it from the guano. And it was a good question raised just uh, during the present, uh, after the presentation of Sir Philip, if uh, there were virus uh, detected from bats. There were studies uh, abroad, but we have not done yet uh, isolation or use of metagenomics in um, determining the viral composition of the guano. And I think this is also a good area of research for, for bats. And even be before the pandemic, uh, as again mentioned by Sir, Sir Philip during his talk, we have been practicing medyo relaxed tayo in doing our field work. But a uh, few years ago, maybe, when he started doing this research on viruses with uh, his collaborator, they, are start they started to wear the PPE and observe biosafety practices. And perhaps, as mentioned by Dr. Dupo, uh, it really will be a challenging year after the, even after the pandemic because we might be required to put into our uh, line, in, line item budget additional cost for our budget for our PPE, okay? And even the oral prophylaxis or administration of... Uh, of vaccine before going to the field. So I think this is this will be one of the topics that will be discussed um, during the Philippine Cave and Cars uh, Digital Forum, which will start this Friday. So I am fortunate to be sent by the director to attend this um, digital forum. And going through the uh, the activities, they will be presenting um, how to how to do cave and karst uh, research in the new normal. So I think this will be a very interesting um, forum to attend to. So yesterday, 
there we 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 celebrated uh we start the three day activity or celebration for the MNH 44th anniversary and uh, uh, this were launched okay the digitization of uh the zoological and wildlife specimens or the uh, zoological and wildlife specimen uh, image bank. I think for the meantime, we, we have images of uh, representative um, lizard, snakes, and frogs. And perhaps we can expand this to other uh, collections. So our, uh, our clients, especially the students and researchers, need not go to the museum for the meantime. Uh, to access our collections so they can uh, they can just uh, click in and type in and then they can just um, generate this the, the images that they need and the information that they need for the conduct of their research or their thesis or dissertation and we are also fortunate that we can proceed with uh, this digitization of our specimens using the div digital div uh, several digital platforms because um, we have been awarded uh, through the director and Mr. Naredo uh, by BIFA, Biodiversity Information Funds for Asia, uh, funds to do the digitization of our specimens. And I think uh, some of our curators who are also in this uh, Zoom Zoom room, conference room, uh, were able to attend the workshop for the digitization of the UPLBM niche specimen workshop. Yesterday also, uh, we have uh, launched virtual exhibits. Uh, we still want the MNH to be felt. We still want to promote our, how rich our biodiversity is, how rich our collections in the museum are. So uh, we have this recording of our launching yesterday of our um, gallery, Makiling Art, featuring the photos, great photos of the master photographer and uh, master photographer of photo art and uh, National Geographic, Mr. Uh, Joel Sartori, and our very own Mr. Florante Cruz, also launched this Makiling's art. So it's like you're playing with your, uh, with your kids. So you can, uh, you can have your kids join you while you explore what we have in this Makiling's art. So you can uh, access this link and I think you can also see this in our website in our, and our FB page. Okay, uh, we have recognized the the problem we had, especially during the first few months of um, the pandemic. I, I think even now there, there, are, there are several hospitals that do not have uh, enough PPE for their uh, essential health uh, healthcare workers. So uh, the museum is one with UPLB task force for COVID-19 or task force laban sa COVID-19. And we are, uh, it's actually an, a welcome opportunity for me and Sir Noel to be part of this project uh, led by the, our colleagues in the SEAT, uh, Dr. Monet Detras and uh, Dr. R.C. Eusebio. So Sir Noel and I are, um, are uh, actually developing uh, procedures standardizing and validating it to test the efficacy of uh, available uh, PPE disinfection methods. So this is not our actual uh, setup for the disinfection of the PPE. So if you will remember, I showed you the mitigation measures that the inverted uh, pyramid, uh, the least effective is actually through the use of PPE. But for, for now, that's uh, one of the easy and accessible way uh, which we can prevent ourselves from the, the effect or being infected by, by the virus. So we hope that we will have good results and I, we hope that uh, we can, this can be used because if we, we, we follow the, 
the ASTM standards for testing the materials. But we hope the, uh, the procedure that will be developed will be very useful. So we can, uh, we can uh, distribute uh, these uh, chambers because we are, uh, the SEA team is developing several uh, chambers for the disinfection of the PPE. So doon po kami sa micro part. So these are, uh, during the pandemic, the, the remarkable traits of the Filipinos of uh, sharing, uh, being generous is, has resurfaced again. And uh, during the lockdown where there is scarcity of ethyl alcohol and uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, through the, the initiative of our director, he said, okay, you bring all our alcohol, the rubbing alcohol and the ethyl alcohol to the University Health Service of the UPLB. We know that it's not enough, but at least we were able to give them some that they can use uh, in the performance of, of their task. And we are, so also, we are also fortunate that uh, the Philippine Textile Research Institute of BOST has given us um, several pieces of the rewear, uh, rewear reusable cloth mask that they have, uh, they have produced as part of uh, big research. And uh, I think uh, this will be distributed to the staff, including the curators of the UPLB MNH. We are also fortunate that our neighbor, the Forest Product uh, Research and Development Institute, has given us a bamboo framed uh, face shield. Okay? And our uh, partners in the Institute of Chemistry also provided us the 3D painted um, framed uh, face shield. Uh, we would like the understanding of our clients that we will be strictly implementing all the protocols that we have set in place. This will not only protect our staff, the people in the museum, but also you and your family. And with this pandemic, the MNH or the UP, UPLB Museum of Natural History stands and remains steadfast in its commitment to be the center of research, education, documentation, and information, inclusive of biosafety guidelines and harmonized with research protocols, not only in the laboratory, but also in, in the field. So know more about us. So if you want to go back again to the protocols that I have presented, you can visit our webpage or follow us through our social media account, our Facebook, we have Twitter, we have our Google Class. And uh, the one mentioned by Sir Philip about uh, the video created by Mr. Cruz on their uh, bat research, you can you can watch that in our YouTube channel. And after this pandemic, I hope you can visit us in the UPLB, uh, UPLB campus, Upper Forestry. And all our recommendation, all the guidelines, all the protocols and practices were based on, um, not only based on our assessment, but also on published materials provided, available in the websites of the um, different uh, local and international agencies. And shout out to my colleagues in the UPLB Museum for always populating our MNH website and, uh, and Facebook page. So you can still know more about us and follow our activities to our uh, Facebook page and uh, MNH website. Uh, my acknowledgement to Mr. Cruz, Ms. Meneses, and Mr. Cosico for the photos that I use in this, in this presentation. So again, uh, we will not be able to, to, address or, uh, to address the current situation brought by the pandemic without the man and woman or the men and women behind this. Uh, I would like to commend all the staff for pag sinabi namin, we have to disinfect, even though they are at risk, they will go and uh, visit the museum for, for disinfection. Um, 
it's really a very trying times for all of us. We would not like only to protect ourselves, but also our family and our associates. So we will continue to bring people closer to nature and nature closer to the people, but in a very biosafe way. Thank you very much. And I hope you learned something from our experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc Marian, for informing us about the biosafety protocols which are in place at the museum. Okay, now Thank if you, you have questions, uh, please type it at the chat box. Now, for, allow me first, uh, allow me, please allow me to uh, give the first question to our speaker. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. Okay, Dr. Marian, so under the present condition, and also we know that the museum is, of course, repository of biological specimens. So I would like to inquire if you still allow specimens, biological specimens, to be deposited at the, at the museum under the present condition. And if yes, are there any special requirements that people should follow if ever they will be depositing specimens to the UPLB MNH? Yes, sir. We, we continue to, we are still receiving uh, specimens. And I think even before the pandemic, we have already received uh, several specimens for deposition in the different section. Uh, I think we can still accept, but we need to uh, exercise uh, extreme uh, biosafety protocols and follow procedures. Like, for example, uh, if they would like to submit the collection, uh, submit some specimens, they can do that by sending it uh, through courier and then it will be subjected to proper disinfection before our staff will be handing the collection and uh, assigning accession numbers. So, yeah, these are some of the procedures that we can follow uh, for uh, accepting specimens not only plants, not only uh, the animal, but also microorganisms. Uh, they, can, they can still submit their samples either uh, through courier or they can, uh, they can bring that to the, bring the samples to the, bring, uh, sorry, bring the specimens to the UPLB MNH, but they have to, in advance, send us a request letter um, together with all the other forms or other requirements that I have mentioned, like uh, medical clearance, uh, the health uh, declaration form, and accomplishing online our assessment form before they will be allowed to visit the museum. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, will, will you allow me another question? <laughs> sure, One more question. Okay. Okay. Now, based on the talks which were given earlier by our special guest speakers, they mentioned that animals can really serve as reservoir of pathogenic organisms, viruses, bacteria, as well as fungi and parasites. Okay, and as we all know, the museum being a repository of biological specimens, okay, specimens are being brought okay, to the museum and we make it available to uh, people for research, okay, people to look at it, to study it. So my question is, uh, medyo, it's not uh, related to the so-called pandemic, but I would like to inquire about the biosafety procedures or measures which are being done in the museum for these biological specimens which can still serve as possible sources of pathogenic agents. Uh, actually, sir, that is um, very hard to answer because uh, we are still putting our biosafety protocols for the specimens in place. Um, to be honest with you, our biosafety protocols uh, started for the microbial mm -hmm. culture collection. And the onset of the pandemic, it has um, come, uh, it's, for, uh, it made me realize that we should have our own biosafety procedures to follow um, for, for specimens that we, especially the, the, the animals that we get from the field and then bringing them to the, uh, to the museum. Uh, in the presentation made by, I'm not sure if that was uh, the presentation of Sir Philip, 
uh, or Mom Jude, that we can still bring uh, the, the virus inside uh, uh, the virus, even though we have already processed the sample as specimen and deposited in the UPLB Museum of Natural History. And uh, I think we, uh, that will form part of the proposed uh, standard operation operating procedure and biosafety protocols that we need to implement. Like for example, if um, in several universities where they have their IACU, so they have to review from, uh, from uh, getting the sample or uh, collecting the sample from the field, processing it, transporting it, and depositing it as a voucher specimen in the museum. I think we need to have, uh, aside from the dose that we are using, like the use of ethanol, perhaps the use of formalin, perhaps those are not enough to ensure that, for example, uh, that animal or that biological specimen may no longer contain trace of bacteria, virus, or even uh, other microorganisms. Because as mentioned by Sir JC, uh, we can still collect and then get historical DNA from our, uh, from our specimens. So we have a proposal with, uh, I think DOST, part of our uh, proposal submitted to them is the formulation uh, and development of a biosafety protocol not only in the laboratory, but uh, handling animals in the field and bringing them to the museum as part of the voucher space. So right now, uh, uh, before the pandemic, we, I think we, the only way we can assure is that we treat them with ethanol, uh, we preserve them or we place them in formalin. I don't know if that will be enough to really uh, to really eradicate this uh, microbial resources because uh, virus are not living organisms, so they can just be. I hope I was able to answer the question. It was not clear, but I also uh, still figuring out by do uh, by searching references on how to address this because uh, it's not norm. Uh, biosafety usually. It's uh, for the laboratory, for microorganisms, for laboratory animal. But this time, it's bringing, uh, bringing biological specimens from the wild to the museum. Okay. Um, one question I think which is related to what was asked earlier is they're asking if it is possible to send biological specimens for identification via courier. Yes, sir. Uh, they can just uh, they can just visit our uh, the UPLB MNH website, so they can be properly guided, properly be guided on how to send their uh, uh, how to send the specimens for identification. Uh, we have a step by step step by step uh, procedure or protocol on to fo uh, to follow uh, on how they can avail that service of the museum. Okay, so another question from the audience. Okay, so allow me to read. So congratulations to the UPLB MNH. Thank you for doing all these efforts and initiative to help the country fight COVID-19. I would like to ask Dr. De Leon about the PPE disinfection initiative. Are these PPEs intended to be used for field work or for hospital use? And if DOH as adopted from WHO CDC interim guidelines, is advocating for the extended use of PPEs. Thank you and congratulations. The, the initial plan for the PPE disinfection is to, um, to provide uh, alternatives for the reuse of PPE in the hospital setting. But I think um, it can also be used for the PPE used in the field. So for the meantime, since we are addressing this pandemic and we would like to help uh, alleviate the scarcity in PPE in the Philippines, uh, ang alam ko po, ang plano po ng uh, UPLB and then SEAT is to use this first for uh, PPE uh, used in the healthcare facilities like the hospitals. And eventually, 
we can also use this for the PPEs that we use in the field. And even in the laborat in our laboratory, even teaching laboratories. Because mas safe naman po yung ating hinahandle in the laboratories, especially the teaching laboratories. Uh, hindi tulad ng hinahandle ng ating mga frontliner in the hospital. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pulido. Uh, I think sir. we really need to fast track our work yes, on uh, uh, yes. infection or disinfection of PPEs. Yes, okay. Yes, so, uh, <clears throat> at this juncture, allow me to present okay, this electronic certificate of recognition signed by our director, Director Juan Carlos de Gonzalez. Okay. So everyone, let's give a virtual round of applause for our uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Marian De Leon. Thank you very much. Happy anniversary. Uh, the museum will also be giving a token of appreciation, a physical frame wow. photograph by National Geographic photo art, Joel Sartore. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. So before we end the seminar, let me give out a few reminders. So please fill out the seminar evaluation form to get the certificate of participation. Now the link is flashed on the screen and copied in the chat box. Now please click on the link provide, uh, provided to evaluate uh, the webinar. Okay, uh, I think uh, Dr. De Leon has a few words to say before we continue. Yes, I, I already asked permission from the chair of the 44th Anniversary Steering Committee and the moderators because, uh, uh, and the moderator, Dr. Sabino, I would like to personally invite everyone to our uh, uh, webinar series also by, hosted by the Philippine Network of Microbial Culture Collection. And if you want to know more about biosafety and biosecurity, in microbial culture collection kindly attend the october october 10 so we have every saturdays october 3 october october 10 uh, october 14 and october 21 so i hope to see you all thank you very much Arnoel. okay now we are also giving out a link to six printable souvenir cards featuring photos taken by nat geo photographer joel sartore the link is on the screen and is also copied in the chat box. Okay. So uh, finally, please follow UPLB Museum in all our social media accounts. You can also now find the UPLB Museum of Natural History in Wikipedia. Okay, so uh, I will now give the okay, screen to Ms. Jen for the closing remarks. We've now reached the culmination of our webinar series. And a big thank you to everyone for sparing us your time to listen to the talks. Um, the aim of this webinar series is to educate the public on the role and importance of biodiversity during this pandemic. And we hope that we have been successful in doing that. Of course, this wouldn't have been made possible without the generosity of our speakers. And we thank Dr. Cardenas on her talk on potential phytochemicals from botanicals that can be used as nature's arsenal against SARS-CoV-2. Dr. Gonzalez, who gave an overview on microbial pathogens and parasites that infect wild and domesticated birds that are transmissible, transmissible to humans. And Professor Philip Alviola, who acknowledged in his talk the significant contribution of the staff and curators of MNH in the study of viruses found in Philippine bats. Professor Judeline Dima Libot, in her talk about zoonotic diseases in long tailed macaques and how transmission of the said diseases can be managed. And finally, Dr. Marian De Leon, who shared in her talk the experiences and challenges that UPLB MNH faced amidst, amidst this pandemic and the initiatives that MNH has taken to ensure a safe working environment. We also thank you for sharing with us your expertise in your respective fields. Our appreciation also goes to the moderators for gracing this webinar series and for ensuring that the sessions run smoothly. And finally, to MNH staff for their tireless effort that was put in to make our anniversary celebration a success. 
uh, we hope that as we educate, the, we educate the public about the importance of biodiversity through this webinar series, this effort also become an instrument for us to stay true to our tagline, which is to bring nature closer to the people and to bring the people closer to nature. Once again, thank you everyone and keep safe.